Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We're given z plus 1 over z, and we're supposed to evaluate z to the 7th power plus 1 over z to the 7th power. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to start with z plus 1 over z equals square root of 2, and then square both sides. If I square both sides, I get the following. z squared plus 1 over z squared plus 2ab gives me just 2 because z and 1 over z are reciprocals. And square root of 2 squared is equal to 2. If you subtract 2 from both sides, you get z squared plus 1 over z squared equals 0. I know that's kind of surprising, but don't worry, we'll get to that later. So let's leave it for now and take the original expression and this time cube it. Okay, so my goal is to reach the seventh power, but I'm going to do it step by step. So now I'm going to cube both sides. When I cube both sides, I'm going to use this formula. A lot of times um, this is an identity that I use for sum of two, uh, for the cube of a sum. I use a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. Especially with reciprocals, this identity is very helpful. Anyway, so if you apply that, you get z cubed plus 1 over z cubed plus 3ab is just going to give me 3 because z times 1 over z is 1 times z plus 1 over z. Now, how do you cube square root of 2? It's basically square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 and it is just 2 times square root of 2. Great. And this is equal to what? 2 square root of 2. Okay, there you go. So from here, I'm going to find the following. I know that z plus 1 over z is square root of 2, so this is equal to square root of 2. This gives me the following. z cubed plus 1 over z cubed equals 2 root 2 minus 3 root 2, which is negative root 2. And let's also save that. So I got the uh, sum of squares and I got the sum of cubes. You see what, what I'm getting at? We do need 7th power, so let's go ahead and do the following. We now know that z squared plus 1 over z squared is equal to 0. Okay, let's go ahead and square both sides. And that's going to give us what? z to the 4th plus 1 over z to the 4th. So let's go ahead and expand this, z to the 4th plus 1 over z to the 4th. But it also gives us 2ab, but notice it's always 2 times 1, which is 2 in this case. And that is equal to 0. Now, this is the very critical part because you're going to get something that's really surprising. z to the 4th plus 1 over z to the 4th becomes negative 2. In the real world, it's not going to happen because z to the 4th is never negative. But in another world, which we'll talk about in the second method, this is possible. So I got the cube and the fourth power. Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and multiply them together. You could also do it differently, like, you know, you could take z cubed and square both sides and then multiply by z, whatever. But I'm just going to do it this way. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take z to the fourth plus 1 over z to the fourth and multiply it by z cubed plus 1 over z cubed. And let's see what happens. z to the fourth plus 1 over z to the fourth is negative 2, and that is negative square root of 2. So when you multiply those two things, the product is going to be 2 root 2. Make sense? And let's go ahead and distribute now. z to the fourth times z to the third is going to be z to the seventh. z to the fourth times 1 over z cubed. z cubed is going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with z. 1 over z to the fourth times z cubed is 1 over z. And finally, 1 over z to the 4th times 1 over z cubed is 1 over z to the 7th power. So we're just using the distributive property and then combine like terms or organize it. So we have now z to the 7th plus, and I apologize, the way I write z's kind of looks like 7's, but anyways, hopefully you can distinguish. And now z to the 7th plus 1 over z to the 7th plus z plus 1 over z, does that look familiar? Equals 2 root 2. Now we're trying to evaluate z to the 7th plus 1 over z to the 7th because that's the question, right? So this is what I'm trying to evaluate. But I do know that this is equal to square root of 2. So just by subtracting, I'll get the answer. From here, z to the 7th plus 1 over z to the 7th is equal to root 2. Because if you subtract root 2 from 2 root 2, that's what you get. And that will be the answer. 
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. And our second method is actually going to explain why we're getting something weird like sum of squares being zero uh, when, you know, it's impossible, right? In the real world. So here's what we're going to do with the second method. We're going to write z as r times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. In other words, z is going to be a complex number. Now, what is r? r is the modulus. We're going to find out later on, but if you invert this or find the reciprocal, uh, you have to invert the r, and the angle is just going to be uh, the opposite cosine of negative alpha or alpha because it's the same minus i sine alpha. So sine is an odd function, so sine of negative alpha is negative sine alpha, but cosine of negative alpha is the same as cosine alpha because cosine is an even function. All right? So here's what we get from the reciprocal, and guess what? We're going to add them up because we, are, we know z plus 1 over z. So let's go ahead and add these up. When we add these up, the terms with cosine alpha, obviously we can collect them and write this as r plus 1 over r times cosine alpha. And the terms with sine alpha, we can go ahead and write like this, r minus 1 over r. And of course we have an i, don't forget that, and multiply by sine alpha. Okay? All right, great. So these are all multiplied. And guess, this is what is what this is equal to it's equal to square root of 2 because z plus 1 over z is given as square root of 2. Now what is that supposed to mean? You have a real number on the right hand side and on the left hand side you have a non-real number which is impossible right you can't have an i in this expression unless the coefficient of i is 0. So you have to have r equals 1 over r which means r squared equals 1 which means r equals 1 because the modulus cannot be negative. This is very important because this means z can be written as cosine alpha plus i sine alpha without the r or r equals 1. Great. Now let's go ahead and do what we did before. 1 over z from here is going to become cosine alpha minus i sine alpha and we're going to add these up and guess what? Something interesting is going to happen. The i's are going to cancel out because we know that z plus 1 over z is real and that's going to equal to cosine alpha. But we also know that z plus 1 over z is square root of 2 and from here we get something amazing. Cosine alpha equals square root of 2 over 2. And you should be familiar with the principle or the smallest angle, smallest positive angle that satisfies this. Yes, if you said pi over 4, you got it right. Now what happens? How do I find z to the 7th from here, right? Well, if I know that z is equal to cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, I can never say it right, the Moivre or the Moa formula gives you the following, cosine 7 alpha plus i sine 7 alpha. And for the 1 over z to the 7th, you get cosine 7 alpha minus i sine 7 alpha. And this is what we're trying to find, so let's go ahead and add these up. I sine cancels out and we end up with z to the 7th plus 1 over z to the 7th equals 2 cosine 7 alpha. But we know that alpha is pi over 4, so this is 2 cosine 7 pi over 4. And what is 7 pi over 4? Or what is the cosine of 7 pi over 4? Same as cosine pi over 4 because it's negative pi over 4. So this is the same as 2 times, I don't think I need to write that. It is equal to 2 times root 2 over 2, and the answer is square root of 2 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.